let's talk about fascia. Now, fascia is one of my favorite topics. I absolutely love diving into it, treating it, assessing the fascial network. We're going to be talking about what fascia is, why it's important, and how it relates to quantum biology. In the next video, we're going to be talking about our relationship with fascia and structured water. So let's get started. Now, fascia is what has long been considered an insignificant scaffolding in the body. When I was in naturopathic medical school in cadaver lab, it was something that uh, you got rid of so that you could get to the useful organ or tissue underneath, right? It was something that was thought to only act as covering, <clears throat> as scaffolding. And what we now know is that our fascia creates this body-wide network. Fascia is that white covering that covers our internal organs. It goes from the surface of our skin down to our visceral vital organs. The heart, the lungs, um, our liver, all of those things are covered in tissue. Even our nerves and our nervous system are innervated by this fascial network, right? So we have this fascia connecting every single structure within the body. Some researchers are even postulating that fascia includes our blood system and our lymph system. But for right now, we're just talking about sort of the traditional uh, definition of fascia being that sort of white, covering that holds our structures in place. And it creates this network throughout the body that connects every single structure in the body. Now, when we look at a cell, we even have this connection through those integrins of our fascia to our cellular health as well. So when we're looking at fascia, we see that it's much more than useless scaffolding, right? It creates this body-wide network, actually really a quantum communication network. And when we're looking at fascia, we see that it's made up of mostly connective tissue. And when we're looking at connective tissue, we are very um, used to thinking of the DNA in that double helix um, formation right? We learned about it in middle school biology. Well, our fascia creates a triple helix. So it creates this triple helix of uh, collagen, right? It's called tropo collagen, and it creates these little tubules. So small, they're on the nano scale, right? Nano tubules are what they call tropo collagen nanotubules, and these tubules create this highway of communication throughout our body. And when we're looking at the fascia, we need to really understand that it acts differently than a lot of the other tissue in our body. First of all, our fascia is piezoelectric. And what does that mean? It means just like uh, an electric uh, charge through a quartz crystal, right? So when we have a quartz crystal and we compress that crystal, it creates an electrical charge. The same thing is happening in our fascia. It's absolutely fascinating. Not only is it piezoelectric, but it is sensitive to sound and vibration and light, right? So our fascia is able to sense not only mechanical pressure via that piezoelectric capacity and create an electrical charge throughout it, it's able to sense and communicate with light via those biophotons, right? Um, Albert Fitzpop has done amazing research on how our cells and cells of all living things create their own light emission, right? Ultra weak photon emission. And it's something that um, we don't see with the naked eye, right? I don't see you emitting light and, and you don't see me emitting light in this video, but our cells and the DNA and our mitochondria are creating this bio photon emission. And he found that it was coherent in nature, meaning that it wasn't random. It seemed to follow a very precise pattern, really implying that these biophotons that our cells are emitting and creating are uh, the 
backbone of a communication network. And the idea that our fascia is using biophotons, sensitive to biophotons, uh, emitting biophotons is incredibly um, expansive of our understanding of this useless scaffolding in the body, right? Our fascia is uh, sensitive to light, it's sensitive to sound, it's sensitive to mechanical pressure and creates that electrical charge when we move it, meaning that when we are moving, when we have movement, and it doesn't I'm not talking about Olympic style training or high intensity interval training. I'm talking about any kind of movement, gentle stretching. Um, one of my favorite forms of exercise is walking. Walking outside is really something that's, you know, woven into our DNA. It's something that we have evolved over millennia with. And in modern day life, we're so removed from such a simple activity that we've um, really centered our lives around for millennia. Walking creates that electrical charge through our fascia. So we have this scaffolding, this body-wide communication network that is sensitive to light, it's sensitive to mechanical pressure and electrical charge, it's sensitive to sound, and it has an intimate relationship with the structured water in our body. And we're going to be diving into this in the next uh, video all about our relationship with our fascia, with the structured water that lines it, what that all means, and how we can really expand our view of fascia and health through this quantum communication network that happens throughout our fascia. If you want to learn more, I have a free fascia guide on my uh, website. The link is down below. And I'm also doing a fascia course, a master class, a deep dive into all things fascia. We know that fascia has an intimate connection with our lymphatic system, with our detox system, with our immune system. It's really much more nuanced and uh, pervasive than we ever thought in uh, medical school, right? The research has been coming in in droves in the last few decades. Fascocytes were just discovered, those cells that create that shear and glide in our fascia. They were just discovered um, a few years ago. So this is really cutting edge research, but it also really mirrors what those ancient indigenous cultures always talked about, that flow of energy through the body, that um, electrical flow, that flow of energy, that flow of chi, of prana, right? All of those indigenous cultures, I mean, all of the ancient indigenous cultures that I have looked at from the Northern European Celtics to South American cultures, North America to ancient Egypt and uh, ancient India and the Asian countries, all of them had an appreciation for this energetic flow in the body. And that has um, a really correlated relationship with what we're seeing in the research around fascia. So if this is something that you're interested, grab my free guide, uh, check out the link for my upcoming fascia masterclass where we dive in deep to all of these topics. And again, if you like this content, subscribe, like, leave me a comment down below with any questions or what you'd like to learn more about. Thank you so much for watching.